Hi, it's Christina with the Sisyphean Journal. And, you know, when I think about the needless death of Amber Thurman, I don't know who I'm more angry with, the abortion advocates or the pro-lifers. I've already covered why I think the abortion advocates did something absolutely inexcusable, but I'm also gonna cover why I think that the pro-life movement needs to take some responsibility for this woman's death. Now, imagine that there's a worker at your business and he's always threatening people. I'm gonna kick your ass, I'm gonna beat you up. Uh, you know, I could just kill him for that. So because of all the threats, HR fires him. And when they fire him, he says, I'm coming back with a gun and I'm gonna shoot this place up. Now, what would you think if HR was like, oh, he's just blowing off steam or oh, he's just being a drama queen and did absolutely nothing to beef up security and protect their employees. And the guy comes back and he shoots the place up. Is he 100% responsible for the evil that he did coming in and shooting the place up? Absolutely. But the HR department and the business take some responsibility for failing to take him seriously. Whenever states were passing these abortion laws, the abortion lobby made it very plain how they were planning to respond. They said that they were going to deny needed medical care to women and that women would die as a result. And the pro-lifers were like, oh, come on, there's a life of the mother exception in there. This doesn't apply to dead babies. That's very clear in the law. You failed to take into account exactly how evil these people are. They said what they were going to do, that they were going to let women die. And they let Amber die. And evidently at least one other woman judging from the uh, media outpouring. Now, what should the pro-lifers have done? They should have taken this threat seriously. First of all, they could have modified the law to say that anybody who denies clearly obvious medical care, claiming that the law forbids them to save a woman's life, will be criminally and civilly liable. Then they should have contacted medical providers in these states and said, you need to have a clear policy on how you're going to handle it because the abortion lobby has told us that doctors are going to let women die. Okay? They told us what they were planning to do. They made it very clear that they, that they were going to let women die. And we didn't take them seriously and we didn't take steps to protect the vulnerable women. So as much as the abortion lobby is responsible for the way they make excuses for these doctors and say, well, it's just too confusing. How is somebody supposed to know that a heartbeat bill doesn't apply if there's no live fetus? It, it's too confusing. Doctors can't understand that heartbeat bills don't apply to live fetuses and to dead fetuses. Heartbeat bills might apply to an empty uterus. It might apply if the fetus is dead. I mean, just because it says you're not allowed to abort a baby with a heartbeat doesn't mean that it doesn't apply when there's no baby or no heartbeat, okay? They made it plain that they were gonna pretend to be this stupid and then they pretended to be this stupid and at least one woman is dead as a result. Start taking these clowns seriously when they make threats. Look at what they do to their own patients. Look what they did to April Lowry. Look what they did to Tanya Reeves. They're, they're willing, they've shown that they're willing to be slipshod and careless about women's lives and the women are their abortion patients. And we need to respond to this by calling the abortion lobby accountable, but we also need to get in there. Every state that's got any kind of abortion restriction, you need to get in there and you tell these hospitals that there is no excuse for doing this that it is crystal clear that these laws do not apply in the situations that the abortion lobby is claiming that they apply in, and that any doctor who pretends to be that stupid is going to be held accountable. Full stop.